Hello, this is the eighth video of my game character rigging series. And so far we've made this simple bipedal rig and used a mail script to export it ready for a game engine. Now this rig should work well, but it's still very simple and could have a few more features. The first new feature I want to add is what I call the trajectory control. Depending on what game engine you're using, you might want to remove all root motion from your animations before exporting it. Or perhaps you might want to set the root motion to something other than what the main root joints animation is. I'm just going to load up an animation with a rig with this new control. Chuck animation. So in this rig, we have this little arrow control down here. It's called the trajectory control. If I play, you can see it just follows along with the character. Let's go to perspective view. So the character was animated running forward, and then I animated this trajectory control to follow him. Now what this means is if, if I use the import script, so import export rig, and we want the order frames, bring in the export rig, and I'm going to unload the animation rig. So now we are left with the export rig and he's, he's running forward. So because I'm using the legacy animation system I don't want that. But now with this new control I have this new trajectory joint which is the top joint. So I can select all its animation and cut it out. And that leaves him running on the spot. Now another good example of this control is if I load up my attack animations in the game. Um, this file has a lot of the basic attacks. You can see there's <laughs> lots and lots of them. Uh, but if we go to frame 220, see how that This is a turning attack, so if you're attacking a, a creature in front of you and then, then decide to attack something behind you, I wanted the attack to, to turn as he attacks. Now, the problem with that is that's great if the character behind you is directly behind you, so 180 degree turn, but if he's slightly, uh, slightly off, doesn't need to turn that far, um, I needed a way to control in code how far he turns. So you can see down here I have the trajectory control and it turns 180 degrees. But now if I uh, bring in the export rig again, where do you Okay, so it's just the uh, the goblin version, but I uh, they're the same rigs. If I unhide this, we should be left with the, uh, the same animation. And if I show joints and delete this root motion, and I have that animation without the rotation. So now in code in the game, I'm able to rotate it to whatever angle I need. You get a tiny bit of foot sliding, but not much, and it seems to work fine in the game. Now this is a, uh, a much older version of the game, but uh, as you can see it has the, the turn. So he attacks and turns and seems to work quite well. So to add this new control to our rig at the moment is actually very, very simple. All we really need to do is use the joint tool and I'm holding down the X button to snap it. I want it at zero, zero, zero. Hit enter. We're going to rename our new joint J trajectory. And all we really need to do is take the top of our joint hierarchy, which is the uh, J main root, and now parent that to this new joint. And because that is controlled by all the constraints and the rig, the rig still works fine. And this will basically stay wherever you put it. 
So next I want to add a control curve to our new joint. So I'm just going to import in my arrow control. And I'm going to leave it small and in the center just because I don't need to animate this control very often. Um, but what I do want to do is use the parent trick to parent uh, minus R minus S for the shape. We're going to parent the arrow shape. So it's called arrow shape to the new trajectory joint. So now if we select the arrow we can move the, uh, the joint around. Although when we reparented we we broke the the rigs hierarchy. So I'm just going to select the J trajectory joint and shift select the master cube and parent it back up. And of course lastly we do not need this empty transform node from the arrow we imported. So I'm going to delete that. And so now that should be all we need. We have the uh, master cube that controls it but everything else will leave that control behind. So if you need to animate the character walking forward you can. It's not the uh, the best animation in the world. But you can see I move that forward 4.779. So if I did the same to this, key it at the start and add 4.779 to the end. I'm just making sure these are linear. We can now import the export rig and delete the root motion. Of course that brings up one other problem. The export rig that we saved out previously now does not have this joint. So of course don't forget to first save this. This is our new rig so I'm going to save it. And now we have to recreate the, the import forward K only rig. So the easy way to do that is if we select the, the mesh, the goblin's mesh, and we're going to use a mel command to basically select all the joints that deform this mesh, which is basically what we need for the import rig. So I'm going to type in select minus r, which um, deselects anything else that is selected. It's the same as just clicking something with your mouse. Uh, and we need to run another mill command inside of this command and to do that we use the uh, the back tick or the sometimes called the tilde key if you press that and I want to use a skin cluster command so I'm going to type in skin cluster we want to query it now because we select the goblin mesh that's the skin cluster we're going to query so we want to query all the influence joints so minus inf for influence so if we run that, we will be selecting all the joints which uh, deform this goblin mesh in the skin cluster. And from here, I want to break all the connections to these joints so the rig doesn't control them anymore. And the easy way to do that is to select, select everything in the channel box. And I want to right click and I want to make sure everything's unlocked. So I'm going to do unlock selected. Of course, this is not just working for the one we see here. We have all of these joints, so it's gonna it's gonna work on the entire skeleton. Now I know everything's um, unlocked. I'm gonna do break connections. So now all our orientate constraints and expressions and things we put onto any of these joints are now not controlled by them anymore. And the next one I do is remove this from the hierarchy. So I'm going to select the top node, which is now our J trajectory joint. I'm going to press Shift P and parent it into the world. That means we should now be able to safely delete all of these rigging controls. So I'm just going to select them and hit delete. 
And of course, our mesh is included in that hierarchy, so I'm going to undo. <laughs> so I'm going to select the mesh, Shift P, put that into the board. Now I can safely delete this. Although we're still left with lots of extra joints that we don't want. The um, IK forward K switching stuff, there's still multiple joints. So I'm going to select the mesh and I'm going to run the command again. If you select the, the mail command window and hit cursor up, it uh, shows your last command. Hit enter. And I also want, I do want this uh, the trajectory joint included, so I'm going to shift select that. But now because I know everything I don't want is uh, children of these joints, I can hold down the shift key and drag a selection, so basically inverting the selection. And I'm just going to hit delete. So that's deleted most of our rig, but there's still a few things left. Um, things like uh, multiply divide nodes and extra stuff that we don't need anymore. When we disconnected it all in the channel box, it didn't actually delete them. So for this, I'm just going to go optimize scene size, open up the options, and I'm going to make sure I want to get rid of absolutely everything. So this window basically tries to delete or tries to find all the nodes that are not connected to anything anymore um, and basically clean up the scene. So if I hit apply with everything selected and hit OK, that should have got rid of everything that uh, is not connected to the rig anymore, leaving us with just what we see in the hypergraph. So I can now save this as the new export rig. Well, I think it, that's about it for this video. Um, there's still a few more things I'd like to add to this rig, uh, but there will be future videos. Um, until then, thanks for watching.